Hello American Botanical Council. This is Chris Killam, Medicine Hunter, and I am uh, videoing myself to you from the Hunin Plateau up in the high Andes in the Peruvian mountains, uh, the center of maca culture. As many of you may know, there's been a problem with maca this year. For about the past 16 years or so, I've been involved with the maca trade with an entity called Chacarunas Trading Company. I did my initial work on behalf of Pure World Botanicals, and when Pure World sold to NatureX of France, I continued on with them. We had a stable, steady growing industry with maca for about 16 years. And then this year, it all changed. Uh, last year, the highest price in the Andes for dried, organically grown maca roots was around 13 or 14 uh, Peruvian soles. One Nuevo Sol, uh, in, well actually, let's see, how to, how to convert this for you. Right now, uh, about 2.89 Peruvian Nuevo Sols equals one US dollar. Uh, last year was about 2.5, so the exchange rate has changed. But this year, buyers of maca from China showed up, and they started roaming the hills of the Andes uh, with sacks of cash, and they started raising the prices. They started outbidding everybody else who'd been in the maca scene for years and years. Uh, and the price has gone from 14 soles to 20 soles to 30 to 40. Now um, we're seeing people paying as much as 80, 100, 120 soles for a kilo of dried maca. This is reminiscent of tulip mania that gripped Holland uh, a couple hundred years ago in which people eventually were spending vast fortunes on single tulip bulbs. We have met people who have been paid as much as 500 soles, so an enormous amount of money per kilo for black maca, because the Chinese believe that black maca uh, will extend and prolong life. Um, seed semia of maca, last year uh, sold at an all-time high price of about $300 uh, dollars per uh, kilo. Today uh, we're seeing prices of, uh, this is Peruvian dollars, soles, we're seeing prices as high as 5,000 soles, 5,000 Peruvian dollars per kilo. There is no indication that there is an end to this. We were approached just today by a woman offering to sell us maca for 120 soles per kilo, dry. Um, one of the complications that we have here is that at least some of the Chinese people who are up here, all of whom claim that they're not purchasing maca, by the way, they all deny that they're buying maca. They're trying to ship it out of Peru illegally, and some of it has been con uh, confiscated. But uh, some of these people are Red Dragon Triad gang members. Uh, Red Tri uh, Dragon Triad originates out of Hong Kong. They've had a stronghold in the Chinese community in Lima for many years now. And in fact, just this week in the news, there was a, a Red Dragon Triad murder of a restaurant owner who refused to pay shakedown protection money. Uh, these guys are up here in the hills. They're carrying guns. Today on the road uh, to Ninacaca, where Chi uh, Chacarunas Trading Company has its maca center, we passed a Chinese pistolero with a 9 millimeter on his hip. You're not supposed to walk around uh, in public with a gun visible, but he was uh, just sitting there relaxed um, in the sun, so I took some f photographs and video of that. Um, it's a real mess up here. It's a mess because the entire market is destabilized. It's a mess because uh, this enormous increase in the price of maca 
means that the price of maca in the United States and Europe and Japan and everywhere that's been buying Peruvian maca is going to skyrocket. This will probably have a suppressing effect on the sales of maca. It could actually lead to a collapse of the maca market, at least temporarily. In China, they actually now cultivate more maca than in Peru. The cultivation is done in the Yunnan region, the southwestern region, but not high enough to grow it the way the Peruvians do. So the Chinese maca being grown in Yunnan is being grown with uh, pesticides and herbicides and um, you know unnatural fertilizers, where here the traditional maca growers don't use anything at all. They simply grow in fertile soil Soil, and then they leave that soil alone for 7, 10, 12 years. So the situation up here is very unstable. Uh, there are guys walking around with guns. There are enforcers driving buyers around. Uh, there's an awful lot of cash being thrown around. The Red Dragon people are known for drugs, prostitution, uh, smuggling people from country to country, and of course money laundering. Uh, some of the media that's been up here suspects that at least part of this maca trade uh, is a convenient way to launder gang money. Um, maca is being shipped to China. I recently went to China to meet with people in the natural trade there about maca. They want Peruvian maca. They don't want the Chinese maca because they know it's contaminated with agrotoxins. So we've gone from a very stable uh, steadily increasing, every year growing maca industry to a totally chaotic, completely unstable situation now. We have absolutely no idea what we're going to face next year, but my prediction, crystal balling it, is that it's not going to be pretty. There's going to be more Chinese pressure on growers. There could be some gunplay. The prices could go up much, much higher than they've gone up this year, even though that doesn't even seem possible. And uh, so we're up here sorting this out, uh, talking with growers, talking with uh, agricultural officials, talking with police, um, trying to figure out uh, you know, how everybody's thinking and feeling about this, and also trying to determine what we can do to help to protect this maca trade and to protect the traditional people of the Andes, because maca is a primary food for them, and now it's become unaffordable. From the plateau, the Hunin Plateau, in the Peruvian Andes, in Maca country, I'm Chris Killam.